Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Back to you with a beautiful episode today, talking about one of the methods of exiting and entering the tunnel system for The Boring Company. And I wanted to talk about this for quite a while because I had quite an interesting idea about how The Boring Company could potentially save money and even potentially make money by utilising this method of removing vehicles from the system. So, what are we talking about? Spiral ramps. Now, initially, I was not exactly the biggest fan of spiral ramps because I was very excited about elevators and maybe using traditional ramps. But the more I've looked into spiral ramps, the more I've come to the conclusion that they will be a very useful addition in certain circumstances and probably in a lot of major US cities. So, spiral ramps, as you can see, fairly obvious what they do. Uh, they come in various sizes and heights, and uh, you've probably used them yourselves if you've ever gone to a multi-story car park, and they do exactly what they say on the tin. Very, very useful piece of kit. So, so it's a more compact version of a traditional ramp. There's uh, positives and, and, and drawbacks to that, as in the speed that you can actually go up the ramp is lowered. Not, in, not, not a lot, but it's certainly lowered quite a bit. Uh, but very compact. A more compact version of a traditional ramp has many benefits and some drawbacks. More useful in medium to high density areas. So we're talking more about uh, city centres, maybe in some kind of uh, arena where you've got lots and lots of people coming into a specific area, maybe near a sports stadium. So there's definitely very good use cases for this kind of system. It's great through part and most importantly, zero moving parts. Unlike the elevators that I've proposed in the past, our rack and pinion elevators, which definitely have a good use case just like spiral ramps however there is that potential there for something to go wrong with this system you've got 100 150 years of almost zero maintenance so benefits and drawbacks good throughput per hour very good throughput per hour we're talking many many hundreds of vehicles if not thousands of vehicles per hour uh, can be prefabricated off-site. We can use our prefabricated concrete segments, which means the process of actually building a spiral ramp, including the ramp structure itself, can be done off-site. Therefore, you ensure high quality. Therefore, you can make the actual process much quicker if it's built off-site. No moving parts or maintenance. Secondary use case, which I'm going to come to in a very short while. Cost effective to build, very cost effective to build. Requires, so drawbacks. You have to have a slip road coming from your main tunnel to the spiral ramp. Um, that is going to have to be quite long because the vehicle is going to have to slow down prior to coming to the spiral ramp. Otherwise, you potentially could end up with a lot of people getting killed if it just goes straight into the 100 miles an hour. That is not going to happen because we're going to have a nice long slip road, giving us lots of time for the autonomous electric vehicles to slow down. Uh, you're kind of limited to 14 miles per hour, whereas with a traditional ramp, potentially you could exit the system at maybe 50, maybe even 60 miles per hour, really, if you had the right setup. So uh, the fact that it's limited to 14 miles per hour is going to slow uh, the egress of vehicles from the system, but it's still faster than an elevator. May cause nausea, obviously, if the diameter of your spiral ramp is quite compact. Um, certain people, myself included, may not enjoy the process of going up that ramp, you know, for, for 40, 50, maybe even 60 foot. So it potentially could be an issue for some people. Not a huge issue. Requires more land. So you, you're going to require, you know, quite a big piece of land here. Um maybe around an acre, maybe slightly less, 0 0.8 acres, something in that kind of, of ballpark, because you're never going to get the perfect size plot of land. You're obviously going to have to buy a bit more than what you actually require. And obviously that costs money. 
Whereas a ramp is going to be a lot more compact. It's going to sit in a, a, a long, thin slot, so it's going to be a lot more cost-effective to buy that, that plot of land and then utilise a traditional ramp. Same goes with the elevators. Uh, it is time-consuming to build. You have to build that slip road first before you then assemble the spiral ramp, so it has... Uh, it has an impact on your critical path of the construction program, so it, it's not it's not going to destroy your program. But you need to consider that building these spiral ramps needs to be done in various stages, and it's going to add time to the uh, the process. So construction methodology, you could go down the route of just doing it in a more traditional way, using excavators. Um, and then just using a crane to uh, excavate the material to remove the materials from the excavation. However, um, you do have these these machines that are very quite common in some countries, especially uh, where you build mines. Uh, this I think this is a Herring Connect machine, so it's a, a vertical shaft sinking machine. Um, the only issue with this machine is that the maximum diameter is, I believe, forty foot. However, there's no real reason why you couldn't make it 50 foot, 60 foot, 70 foot. You just require a different piece uh, of machinery sitting in that shaft there. But the whole process can be mechanized. You can remove the possibility of uh, dangers to operators. It can be done very, very quickly. So, for example, uh, a shaft like this, once you've got it set up, so a typical setup might take uh, maybe two to three weeks. Um and you lower this machine down on, on a strand jacks. Um, and same goes for the, uh, the the actual external walls of the uh, the shaft. It takes two to three weeks to set up, but you could easily be digging uh, 10 to 15 foot per week, if not more than that, maybe even 20 foot per week. So you could dig shafts well in advance of your tunnel coming to that location and... Uh, you could have lots and lots of different teams digging those shafts using this equipment. So it is very, very quick and efficient and cost effective and maybe an opportunity for the Boeing company to build something like this or maybe modify an existing machine. So that is really quite fascinating to think about. Also, you may have noticed I have these, pa these pictures of pile caps on the side and you're thinking, well, why are we building pile caps, Will? And the reason is because I want to use the, the walls of this shaft as, as a purpose-built uh, foundation for a multi-story building. However, with it being a circular shaft, it's not exactly ideal for your traditional um, square multi-story high-rise buildings. So you will have to add additional foundations around the perimeter. Uh, and you could do this using pile caps, which is basically uh, a, a, co a concrete um, pad uh, with various CFA piles uh, dug initially and then cropped and then you drop your pile cap on top of that um, so here's a nice drawing that I did from above our drone view of the actual spiral ramp as you can see down here uh, vehicles are coming in on the right hand side because I know you like to drive on the right hand side in North America uh, this area here marked off in green is um, for pedestrians so this ramp here will also work as an emergency egress in case there's something wrong with the uh, uh, the tunnel system um, this is essentially um, a ramp that leads down to the main arterial tunnel it will probably not be dug via a TBM possibly using pipe jacking but more likely using more traditional means um, the reason for that is because it won't be that long. It'll be around a thousand foot long, maybe 850 foot long at the best case. Um, the, uh, the actual walls of the, uh, excavation of the shaft, they're built using precast concrete segments. And then we have, uh, essentially what looks like a roundabout with a ramp and that takes you up to the surface. This central core can also be used as the core for any building that you sit on the site. I would recommend rather than using precast concrete segments, and it could be done with precast concrete segments, is to actually build it 
in situ, actually pouring concrete on site and using a slip form system, that could easily be done in under a month, if not less than that, probably a lot less than that really. Um, and that allows you then to sit your lift uh, shaft and your uh, stairwells actually in and around here. So a typical diameter, you're looking at around 58 feet. The core would be around uh, 10 to 12 feet, maybe slightly less than that. Um, so it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly big piece of infrastructure for the system. Obviously, that is going to incur a cost. How do we get that cost back uh, and reduce the costs of building the system? Because already we're spending millions and millions of dollars building our tunnels. So here's our cross section. As you can see, vehicles come up here where this red arrow is. You're coming up the ramp here. Uh, this is our core. So you're going in and around the core up to the top. Typically, I'd imagine a spiral ramp will be around 40 foot deep, maybe 42 foot. The core of our um, spiral ramp will sit on its own pad stone. And then we have the walls of our shaft, which can be used essentially as the foundations for a building above. So how would we do that? Well, we, we get planning permission for an in situ uh, concrete frame as above, possibly using uh, circular columns. Circular columns, columns would be situated as per the diagram here. This column, I know you're going to talk about this column and say, hey, this looks a bit odd, Will. It's right above the ramp. Yes, we wouldn't be able to use pile caps uh, here. We'd have to use some kind of uh, enlarged uh, padstone foundation, possibly using uh, micro bore piles to a depth of around 14 foot. Nothing too deep here because obviously we don't want to uh, uh, pierce through our tunnel lining here. So how would this look? as a plan view. So here we go. Here's our building that would sit on top of this. I'd imagine the Boeing company wouldn't actually build a, the multi-story building. We would, uh, or the Boeing company would get planning permission. And then once they'd opened up the system, they would then sell it off to a developer. They could use it for an office building, for residential, maybe it could be used for retail space. Um, you know, they could have restaurants in here or something. Uh, it could be with a foundation this deep, it could put it potentially be up to uh, eight to nine, maybe even 10 stories tall. So, you know, you're talking quite a, a fairly big building would, would sit itself on here. Um, and you'd have vehicles coming in and out of here, which would be fairly de desirable for whoever owned the land after the Boeing company had finished with it. So how much would that, Actually, this all cost because as you know um, traditional ramps have a reasonable cost to them if we we're going to use elevators we'd have to have lots of lots of banks of elevators so multiple elevator shafts that's all going to cost a lot um, how can you make money back by using a spiral ramp system and this is what has really excited me about potentially using this method of uh, getting vehicles out of the system and potentially into the system as well. So you acquire that piece of land for $2.2 million. These are all theoretical numbers, by the way. Um, it's not in any particular city or state. Uh, I, I'm just giving you an idea of, of what we could potentially uh, spend and save in the long term. So uh, we acquire a piece of land, which is, which is adjacent to our, our tunnel. That costs $2.2 million. We then build our spiral ramp. Yeah, and that's just the spiral ramp. I've not included the um, the, the actual uh, access tunnel going down to our main tunnel. So the actual spiral ramp itself would cost $2.3 million. We would then get planning permission on that site for a multi-story building, then sell that off for $3.5 million million dollars with planning permission and then the actual cost when you work it out would only be one million per spiral ramp so you theoretically could build you know 20 30 40 of these spiral ramps along 
your tunnel route and it would only cost you know 40 million for 40 ramps which is extremely cost effective granted that in some cities you know the land acquisition would be maybe double this especially in a city like la trying to find a suitable piece of land you know you're talking double if not triple that however also the cost the sale of the site that would also increase as well so you're looking in the region of around a million pounds per spiral ramp which is very very cost effective hence why i think this is a brilliant method that should be utilized via the boring company in las vegas okay that's my idea i hope you liked it thank you all for joining please like and subscribe to the channel we now have 4100 subscribers on youtube we are going for 5000 that is the next target join us on twitter discord and instagram if you've not already done so please consider doing that i really do want more people to join us there i'd appreciate some comments below do you think spiral lamps are a good idea do you do you think Having actually uh, a building sat on top of the spiral ramp is a good idea or a bad idea. Tell me what you think about that. And thank you to all my Patreons. I've not thought, uh, you know, thanked my Patreons for quite a while, but I want to do so again because you support this channel. You make this channel work. Ashley Hill, Mike McLean, David McKay, Christopher Kinsey, Jim Chap, uh, Curtis Coyne, and Milton Denmark. Thank you so much. And remember, guys, don't be boring. Stay tuned for the channel. And please keep supporting me and The Boring Company and all the other startups that are working in this space. Thank you all and goodbye.